day to you. Welcome to the Field of Streams, where I, your host, Janine McRae, bring you the tiny thoughts that stream from my brain and present them to you as though they're buxom artichokes fresh from my organic garden and they've been gently parented and encouraged in the arts so their hearts are extra sensitive and their taste next level. Mmm, meaty. Now, I can't promise you much with these little missives, but I can promise you this. I won't keep you long. A promise like that deserves a follow, don't you think? Tap that follow button. Every time you do, a writer unclenches their jaw. This episode was inspired by a small child getting hold of his parents' credit card and ordering a whole lot of SpongeBob SquarePants popsicles to be sent to his aunt's address. See, that's smart. Don't send it to your address. Do it secretly and send it to the aunt. Now, the kid got exactly what he ordered, but you know who didn't? The mum. The mum got a headache from 918 yellow sponge-inspired ice creams and an 18% interest rate, probably, on top of the $2,500 purchase. I'm just speculating on the interest rate there, but that sounds like the kind of gouging you can expect from a credit card. By the way, that's 51 cases of ice creams, if you're wondering. Hmm, I don't think mum ordered that. It got me thinking. First, what a precocious little tyke. Kids do the darndest things, you little scallywag. But also, sometimes your brain does the darndest thing too and delivers something to your table that you sure as hellfire did not order. And sometimes that thing you did not order is exactly what you needed. Take a listen and enjoy dining on this uh, idea that came from my brain and the corresponding restaurant on the inside of my skull Yelp review that I put at the end. Basic premise, the execution doesn't always match the vision, but it still tastes good. I said that like an American. It still tastes good. I don't know how I say good anymore. Please enjoy my spirited reading of How to Deal with Unexpected Edibles. No, I'm not going to say something. This is not... Hello? Excuse me? Hello? Look, there seems to be a little bit of a mix-up. This is not what I ordered. Yes, of course I'm sure. I would never have ordered this. What do you mean, maybe, unconsciously? Why would I unconsciously order this travesty of ideation? It literally looks like it was dragged backward through a vat of obscure references and sprinkled with a delicate dandruff of niche nerd ingredients. I 100%, hand on heart, absolutely did not order this, whatever this is, from my brain just now. No, no, believe me, I do appreciate the care that's gone into how it's arranged. Compliments to the brain kitchen. That's not the point. What you have so theatrically laid out before me, really marvellous flourish and presentation, by the way, belies the fact that this is not, by any definition, what I ordered. I mean, look here. Look at this menu. So, we had our starters. Excellent, by the way. A magnificent selection of creative prose nibbles and ear-bending auditory snacks to whet the appetite and such. But then... here. Look at this. See? This is actually what I ordered. Allow me to read it to you. Daily idea special, standard fare. One standard, run-of-the-mill idea that won't upset tummies nor cause a case of the runs. Devoid of any exotic flavours or outlandish taste. Served warm to the touch. Totally relatable and joyously disposable. No nutrition data available. This is clearly not that. Yes, I know it came out of my brain, but the point is that it looks nothing like the picture. You know, the vision? This is... I don't even know what this is, but it's quite disturbing. Yes, disturbing. That's the word. I mean, right off the bat, the colour is extremely off-putting. And why is it making that weird sound when I poke at it? What is that sound? Is it moaning? And don't even get me started on what's happening over here in this zone. What is that? A sort of intellectual confetti? No, this is going to cause problems. No one is going to like this. It's going to get so many bad reviews on Yelp. Yes, they have a version of Yelp for ideas. Where have you been? This is getting us nowhere. I'd like to speak to the chef. 
Who is doing the cooking in my brain today? Is it Missy? I bet it's Missy. This is exactly the kind of stunt she'd pull. Don't tell me she's on a break. No, I'm not causing a fuss. No one is getting upset. Bring me the chef. Okay, what about the proprietor? Someone must own this joint. Hello, finally. Look, I just want someone to explain to me why this idea here, no, don't turn away, is clearly not what I ordered. And if you think it is, I would like to lodge a formal complaint pointing out that it looks nothing like the picture in the menu for your so-called restaurant on the inside of my skull. I mean, what the fuck is this? No, as I told your colleague, I did not bloody well order this. Don't give me that excuse. Why should I be excited that this is what I got? More than I ordered? What do you mean more? What are you on about? Potential? Look, when I order shit from the idea kitchen, I want it to look exactly like it did in my head when I wrote down the damn recipe. You should have seen it. The vision was perfect. Flawless. It had all the unnoticeable proportions of a totally inoffensive thing. When read aloud, no hackles were raised. No outcries rippled across the oceans of public opinion. It had the kind of pulpy gloss that made folks nod their heads and hum in unison as they reached for their wallets. At its release in my vision, I instantly received ten calls from agents willing to represent me. I saw it all unfurl, a flag of magnificent beauty in the projector room of my brain kitchen, so I ordered it right up, lickety-split, because I thought that sounded all right to me. In fact, that sounded delicious. Where is that thing? Yes, I know this confusion concoction came from the same place, but it is clearly not the same thing. Am I supposed to eat this with my hands? Where do you even start? I'm scared that if I stick a fork in it, it will literally explode in my face. It's obvious to me that something happened between vision and execution, and I just want to know what happened and who to fire. How are you running that kitchen back there? Is it OSHA compliant? I bet you have the mayo uncovered. Dollars to donuts, I bet the rancid mayo started all this. Happy accident? What the hell are you talking about? No, it's not like the kid who accidentally ordered $2.6,000 worth of SpongeBob SquarePants popsicles. So not the same. Yes, I agree that was a happy accident. Who wouldn't want 918 popsicles? But that kid got exactly what he ordered. Popsicles that look like a yellow sponge wearing square pants. This? Who lives in a sewerage pipe under some sludge, grunge blob sad pants? Is the chef coming out? Too scared to face me, eh? Oh wait, nothing else to do today. I don't care how busy they are. Busy doing what? Making more crazy shit on the crazy shit production line with a crazy shit sous chef toasting crazy poop croutons all day? Bring me the chef of this crazy, not what I ordered brain and I shall Gordon Ramsay the nightmare right out of this kitchen. Where did everybody go? Oh, I get it. This is the part where I realise that I am the chef and we'll have this real come to Janine moment and start saying shit like, well, aren't you glad your brain works in this way? And it's really magical. Magical doesn't pay the rent, chef -o. Kook bucks won't fuel my retirement fund. Pokes at stuff on plate. It is a little interesting, I guess. And what exactly is that aroma? Did you use some of that stream of consciousness sauce? A little free association spice? I've always wanted to try that. Looks around furtively. Maybe just one little bite. Yelp review. Restaurant on the inside of my skull. Rated four stars, 40 reviews. Brain food, non-traditional. Review by Janine M. California, USA. Zero friends. Two reviews. I eat here all the time and have never once gotten poisoned. Once you get over the fact that you never, never get what you ordered, it'll become your favourite hangout for people watching and pointless snacking. The staff are super aloof, which personally I like. 
never in your face, bother you only periodically to top up your energy reserves jug, and will listen sympathetically to your complaints while jotting down notes. Their eye rolls are only mildly annoying. The premises, while chaotic, are tidy enough. I'm not saying I would eat off any surfaces in there, but maybe on a dare? For five dollars? Actually, maybe even only one dollar. The cuisine is wildly inconsistent in final product, but never in quality. It's weird, not wacky. That said, the vibe can feel super quirky at times, and you never know what kind of crowd you're going to get in there, but I for one love going inside the skull and taking a wild chance on the creative cuisine. Note, no substitutes. P.S. The dessert bar is off the chain. And there you have it, today's episode. I hope you'll come back for more. These missives are designed to inspire creative folk to get out there and make something of their own. So if you enjoyed this episode, please follow the podcast and you'll never miss one. Sign up to read my writing at janemacrae.substack.com. But for now, I'll leave you with this. Love what you love and I'll see you out there making stuff.